police emergency. Call you through to the police. Can I help? Hi, I'm... I'm... Shut your fucking mouth! Grinner is a former member and boss of the Custom House set which is based in Newham. While he was not an official boss, he was an on-job older who commanded a lot of respect within the gang. Grinner was born to Sierra Leone immigrants and was the oldest of four siblings, which included two boys and two girls. His younger brother would take his name but I'll go into that situation afterwards. Grinner was originally born in Sierra Leone but moved to the UK at the age of one. His father moved in 1996 from Sierra Leone, at the time where civil war was taking place, which saw 50,000 people lose their lives. His mother was also from Sierra Leone and met Grinner's father in London and married him in 2003. His father was a railway worker and his mother was a domestic carer and would work as hard as they could to raise their children as well as they could. Their house was always full of love but it wasn't always full of money and by the time Grinnell was a teenager, he would get drawn into the streets. He was raised in Canning Town and Custom House, a deprived and dangerous area of Newham which has a rich history of gangs which dominate the area where 52% of children are raised in poverty. However, although Grinner would join the local gang, he always had ambitions of living a legitimate life. He was very close with his younger brother and would try and turn him towards a legitimate life, as he could tell the issues with his lifestyle already. But unfortunately, this wasn't possible to be achieved, as I will go into later. At the time that Grinner joined the Custom House gang in the late 2000s, the war in Newham had just begun and was frying. Many young men were already losing their lives and soon Grinner would feel his first loss when Ace, Custom House, was killed by CGE members. He would stab a CGE member in retaliation for this but it would put him onto the radar of his ops. As the years passed, he started focusing less and less on his education, instead selling drugs, and getting involved in robbing drug dealers. While he didn't ever go to prison, he was certainly an active gang member, who allegedly had between five to six men on his blade. The beef with Seventh would become a lot more serious as the years passed by and Grinner would soon become involved. He would be involved in a double stabbing in Forest Gate on Seventh later stabbing a seventh member on his own when he caught him lacking in Custom House. But Grinner would soon turn victim himself, getting stabbed in his back by Skyver, BCM slash 15th. This would become a turning point for him as he attempted to turn his life around. While he wasn't able to completely, he turned to his family for advice and started to look at futures in the legitimate world. But he was still dragged into the streets, allegedly stabbing Skyver back in retaliation but also stabbing Anakin, 7th, on another occasion. This drill meant that no matter how much he wanted to change his life, the next generation of 7th wouldn't forget and would make him one of their biggest targets. At the end of 2016, Grimmer would apply for an apprenticeship on the railway, just as his father did. But as he remained in the same area, it was still just as dangerous for him. As months passed from his latest drill on 7th, Grinner believed that he was probably going to be safe. I say this due to the events on the 2nd of April 2017. That day. He was working on his father's car on a very hot day and told him he was going to the shop to get a drink. He was the definition of lacking, with him having no weapon for self-defense and was going to Freemasons Road, one of the deadliest strips in the whole of London. It's just sad that young men can't even go to their local shop in peace. As he entered BJ Wines, CB, Crazy Blacks, 
7th, and three other 7th members would jump out of a car parked nearby and chased him inside. He had no chance to defend himself as he was stabbed repeatedly in his chest, causing his death. His father saw the helicopters and heard police sirens but had no clue that it was his own son who had lost his life until police arrived at his front door. All four of his killers were arrested but released without charge on a lack of evidence and his case remains unsolved. Grinner's younger brother was only 14 at the time and took his older brother's death terribly. He spent the next day phoning him repeatedly, trying to get a response but of course there never was. This next part of the video will focus on young Grinner, Custom House. Young Grinner took his older brother's name when he turned 16 and started to also rep the local gang that his brother did. He used to train at the Crystal Palace FC Academy and was a very talented footballer but unfortunately lost his place. He still continued to focus on his education though and had a dream of being a property developer. But when he turned 16, he joined Custom House and would start to get involved in some low-level gang activity. He never scored on any ops but had a lot of respect from their elders due to his brother. When the pandemic hit in March 2020, school was closed though and young Grinner would spend most of his time on the roads with other gang members. It's hard to ever judge someone in his position to not fall into that life especially when you spend over six months out of school. For the next year, young Grinner would start to sell and smoke weed on a very low level but would often be seen in the area on his electric scooter. Unfortunately, though, this would only last for so long until he started to buck some of his ops. The same month that his brother was killed in four years previously would soon turn into the worst month of his and his parents' lives. On the 9th of April 20th 21, young Grinner would be with M. Trapo, Custom House, in Prince Regent Slane when he was approached by ACGE Older, who stabbed them both. Luckily, they both survived but their attacker would escape justice under a lack of evidence. However, only two weeks later, he would sadly get stabbed again and this time he would not survive. On the 26th of April 20th 21, young Grinner was outside his house on Cool Finn Road, only yards from Freemasons Road, where his older brother was killed four years before. At around 3pm, a car would pull up with a gunman firing a shotgun pellet into his chest, before repeatedly stabbing him. His wounds were so severe that the police didn't even know he'd been shot until they completed an autopsy on his later on. His killer, censored, was on the run for a stabbing on filthy, custom house, at the time and would eventually be arrested a few weeks later. Despite the fact he was on the run, he's never been charged with young Grinner's murder, instead receiving 15 years for attempted murder. Like his older brother, his murder remains unsolved, despite the fact his brother's murderer is in jail serving 23 years on gun charges. The Jar family is now without their two sons and is permanently broken. Two sons dead within four years in the same month. There are few families who've been as unlucky as theirs but this could happen to any family whose sons are involved in this life. Plenty of brothers have been stabbed or shot before, but just haven't lost their lives. So many young men play a lottery with their lives and it's so sad to see, but even sadder should be the state of the country if this is the best route, they believe they can take their life.